Welcome back. Easter is the principal festival of the Christian church, celebrating as it does the return to life of Jesus Christ on the third day after his crucifixion. In a world turned upside down by two years of lockdowns and attendant disruption, followed by a cost of living crisis and war in Ukraine, the promise of hope, which is what the Easter festival might be said to be all about, could hardly be more welcome. Joining me now to pause for thought and to remember why Easter has mattered to billions of people all around the world for the best part of 2,000 years is the Reverend William Philip, Senior Minister of the Tron Church in Glasgow. Hello, Reverend William. Good evening, Neil. Good to see you again. Um, I'll get right into it. What does Easter mean to you, William the Man, and as, as well as William the Reverend? Well, uh, I suppose the most important thing is it doesn't really matter so much what Easter means to me or to anybody else. What matters is, is what Easter is really about, and it, it's the it's Jesus Christ Himself who tells us that. We've been studying this year in in our services running up to Easter from John's Gospel, chapter twelve, and that's the end of Jesus' public ministry, just before He's about to go to the cross. And he says at that point, Father, glorify your name. Uh, now is the time for the Son of Man uh, to be glorified. And so what Jesus says is that above all things, uh, Easter and the cross of Christ brings us a revelation, a great revelation, the revelation of, of, of the meaning of true glory in this world. It's interesting you've been talking about presidents, about empires, uh, and all of these things. Well, uh, Jesus says the cross is where we see ultimate glory, divine glory. He, he prays in the upper room, Father, glorify me with the glory I had with you before the world existed. And that's what we see in the death and resurrection of Jesus, the eternal glory uh, of the triune God. That was the glory Jesus shared with the Father before all worlds. And that means that the glory at the very heart of the universe the glory at the very heart of God, divine glory, is what we see unveiled uniquely and fully in, in, in the cross. And that is a staggering thing. That's a challenging thing, isn't it, when we're living in a world of wars, of, uh, of ascendancy, of one nation over another, empires, all of these things. The glory that comes from man is a very, very different thing and the glory that comes from God. And the cross reveals to us true glory. It's, it's, a, very, it's a very powerful message that you, that you offer there, uh, William, um, and one I'm sure will be very gratefully received by many, many people watching, listening to this. But with, with so much, as you mentioned, so many practical challenges for people to face, cost of living crisis, uh, you, you know, concerns about war and the spread thereof. It, why should we set time aside for a fest, a celebration of Easter when, when people have so much that's, that's imminent and in their faces and in their lives to deal with? Why should they set because aside time? Because there's a desperate need, isn't there, in the human heart and in our human society for hope. And as we look around at our world, the, there is very little hope uh, in humanity. Uh, we look to leaders of nations. You've just been talking about that. Uh, where is the hope there? Uh, hope that disappoints. Uh, there's promises from governments. Um, but what do we find there? Well, these promises are so often hollow. The hope that we have in Easter is that through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, there is a rebirth uh, of true humanity. And what we see in, in the risen Jesus Christ is human beings as we were created to be and as we've been redeemed to be uh, through, uh, through Jesus Christ. There's great hope in the face of death. What you see in the risen Jesus is the future of humanity. The future of humanity doesn't come to us through technology. It doesn't come through transhumanism. It doesn't come through progress or, or spreading democracy around the world. How is that working out? The end of history was declared, wasn't it, about 20 years ago, 30 years ago, with the end of communism, a utopia. Things can never get any better than they are. Well, how is that working out? The, the cross of Jesus and the resurrection of Jesus says there is more. There is hope. There is a new world. Christ is risen and Christ is returning. And when he returns, those who are his will be raised to new life eternal like his bodily life not some wispy ethereal sort of floating around in the ether but the solidity uh, of resurrection bodies jesus ate jesus 
uh, met with people. Jesus, the risen Christ, was more real as a human being than ever before, more solid. The, the, the shadow lands are put away. C.S. Lewis used that wonderful phrase that these are just the shadow lands, but he shows us the real lands, the real future, the real hope. And that is the hope of the Christian gospel, not in a uh, hope that comes from man, but in a hope that has come to us from God through the cross of Jesus Christ. And, and it's an extraordinary hope, and it's a wonderful hope. It's the only hope. And to me, uh, it animates my whole life. That's what it means to be a Christian, uh, to live in hope, to know the reality that is coming. It's a, it's a fascinating paradox that you point to there when you say that, you know, it's, by so many metrics, there's never been a better time to be alive you know, m more food has been available, you know, more uh, medical advances have been have been shared widely. You, you, technology, the good side of technology has, has enabled all manner of things. And yet happiness and hope uh, simultaneously and paradoxically seem to be <laughs> harder and harder to find. You're, you're right well, that, that, we're, that we're losing something else in amongst all the all the man-made gifts that we've that we've created for ourselves. I think we are, but look at the end of at the end of the day. What really matters is that uh, every one of us is going to return to dust. It doesn't matter how charmed our life is. It doesn't matter how long we can be made to live through technology, through modern medicine. And you know, we're, we should be very thankful for any of these things. But the fact is, Neil, you and I are going to return to dust. And what happens then? And the, the, the reality of the Christian hope is that we uh, have a hope of resurrection, of, of life eternal, of life uh, that is uh, uh, at last removed from all of these uh, tragedies of death and sin. The problem in this world is the human heart. The problem is the sin in the human heart. And we can, we can look around at the world, and we're very good at seeing evil out there, in fact, in the current circumstances, people are very quick, aren't they, to demonize the other from whatever camp they happen to be. And the problem is that the evil is inside. It's in our hearts, in yours and mine. And until that's dealt with, there is no hope. But Jesus Christ came to deal with that problem, the problem of sin and evil. And so that's why at the end of his uh, of his public ministry, he cried out to people and said, walk in the light while you have the light, because that's what I've come to bring, salvation, not judgment. But there will be a judgment. And the well, question is, where will we stand on that day? And that's the joy of Easter. It's a message of life through judgment. William, it's this weekend of all weekends, you know, and it's the ethos of the channel to, you know, to hear as many voices as possible and what you've had to say. See, we don't hear enough of, and I'm delighted that, that, you've, that you've brought these words to us uh, this evening. I'm sure it'll have brought a great deal of uh, hope and reassurance and comfort to many people. So, uh, Reverend William Philip, Senior Minister of the Tron Church in Glasgow, thanks for now, and I'll look forward to the next time our paths cross.